Kelly, we're here uh, after uh, a day or two after the decision was handed out by the appeal court. Uh, for, first of all, the observation that you and I and Helen met here, what, six or seven months ago, when the story was very different. Tell me what happened uh, in the last few days with regards to the judgment and, and how you're feeling. Uh, on Tuesday morning, we got woke up with a phone call from our uh, solicitor to tell us that we had won the, the Court of Appeal and that the lakes are now safe, City Park is now safe. SRC uh, planning application was ruled as unlawful and the planning permission was, I think the word was expunged, but it was it, the planning permission has been cancelled. So the lakes are safe, our City Park is safe, all this, all this is safe. How did you feel? Oh my God, oh my God, I cannot tell you how happy, how happy I was because this campaign has taken over six years of our lives, six years. It should never started, it did. However they managed it, they, they, they awarded planning permission and it just, it, it took over. You know, you, you were walking around here thinking, oh my God, oh my God, how can they take this away? They can't take this away. This is, this is our special place. This is, this is the place that, you know, it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. You know, so it's safe. Helen, incredibly emotional. It was the first thing, and so, happily surprised. But there was a part of me that was worried. I think we all were that it might not go our way, and the fact that it did, it, it was just I was totally elated. And then really very quickly, I got really very angry about how it got to this point and and what they had put us through. The council had put us through for the six years that they've put us through this and about the realisation that they really didn't care. They really, really underestimated the groundswell of opinion against what they were attempting to do. And they didn't take that into account. They didn't take that, they didn't take us into account. And now they're going to ruin it because it, it, it didn't work. And they thought that they could walk all over us with their council boots and get away with it. And they didn't. And I think justice definitely has prevailed. Katrina. Well, I was down here looking over the water with my husband on Tuesday morning. Wasn't expecting to hear anything till the Wednesday, the 26th. And my husband had the drone up over the woodland and I was, he said, we mightn't have it next year, so I want to get some good photographs of the woodland in the autumn colours. And I was looking over the water and I was just saying a wee prayer mm -hmm. that the right decision would be made when I got the phone call from Kelly. And I was just... The tears just welled up in my eyes with happiness and I started randomly shouting at people walking past because they have won, <laughs> you know, so yes, a moment of madness, I was shouting crazy at people and Kim thought something had happened and I fell in the water, but, uh, yes, absolutely elated. There are a few days being used in the conversation this morning and we have to be careful not to be uh, completely specific for for re for various reasons you don't understand, but you you're, you're very pointed at as to who should take if not the blame, uh, sh who should be accountable. Is that a better word? Yeah, ABC Council didn't consult on the application. They didn't consult the public to see what we wanted in our park. Okay. This landed on somebody's doorstep in, in, in 2016 and that, that was the first that we knew that they were going to take, or trying to take away acres of this park and build, and build a campus. You know, we read, we learned, we, we, we learned about planning. We read the Craig Avenue area plan and it didn't comply. And then we went and we, we did our research, we, we went to all the minutes, we went to the planning office, people spoke to us, you know. And at the very beginning, there was a pre-application discussion between representatives of SRC Council, or SRC and ABC Council, and two senior planning officers told them that it didn't comply with the Craigavon area plan of 2010. They put it through. ABC Council put it through. They put us through. They, pa they put us through a six-hour uh, planning meeting. They put us through a two-day tribunal. 
they put us through a five day judicial review and another five days in the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. And the judge in the Court of Appeal ruled that ABC Council misinterpreted the Craigavon area plan and that it didn't comply. And that's what we said in 2016. Mm -hmm. So millions of pounds of public money has been spent fighting a decision that should never have been made. Now, ultimately, we pay for that. The ratepayer pays for that. Mm -hmm. So somebody has to be held accountable. Some Somebody has to be held accountable for pushing that decision when their own planning officers knew and told them that this didn't comply. We shouldn't be standing here today. It shouldn't have got this beyond that meeting. Helen, I've, I've taken you a slightly different point within that. We'll come back to you for, for the point that you're making and see what the conclusions of all of this is and where you go next. But Helen, that campaign in itself raised awareness for this park like no other campaign Absolutely. before it. Yes, I mean, this park, Craig Avon as a city, was in the inception of it was in the early 60s. And when they built the lakes, when they built the lakes, they dug them out of the ground, it was a muddy hole full of water. That was it. And then, it, over the, fa the 50 years since, it has become a park. Things came here of their own volition. We didn't go and lift squirrels and bring them. They came, they found their home here. Like a lot of people who came from different places to Craig Avon. Mm -hmm. And it's their home. This is my home. Mm -hmm. This is my park. And it belongs to the animals and it belongs to the people of Craig Avon. You, you, you can't underestimate the, the impact that this park has on people's lives. You can't, you can't understand how much people need here. And I mean, if it hadn't been for Kelly and all the work that she did and, and the, the forensic work that she did, and for, and for Claire McCann, who, because of her, we got the, the financial backing, we, we, could, get, we could get the um, legal aid. Mm -hmm. As Kelly said yesterday, if, if for that, the, co the college would already be here. But if it hadn't been for Kelly, who has a mind like a steel trap, to gather that information and to keep it and to go with it, mm -hmm. it would be a done deal. And I think that's the thing, coming back to a point that Kelly made. When those leaflets came out in 2016, was that, yeah, 2016, it was a done deal. This is our lovely campus. This is where we're going to build it. This is when we're going to start it. And a lot of people thought it was a done deal. Mm -hmm. Clearly we didn't, and we were right. Mm -hmm. We were raising awareness on foot. We walked for miles with leaflets that we printed ourselves. We did a bit of fundraising to get leaflets printed to bring it to the awareness of people that weren't on social media and the amount of people's doors that I was at uh, before Covid mm -hmm. <laughs> that didn't know anything yeah. about it, you know, that were shocked that they were going to build a college of that size right in the park grounds and the amount of places that it could have been you yeah, know, and, and good. We were never against the college, no, never, never ever. The amount of places in Craig Avon that it can be built, you know, but we just didn't want it in the woodland. The woodland here is beautiful and it's full of nature, full of animals, you know. We have podgers, we have woodpeckers, it's endless, you know. Let me bring you to some sort of a conclusion to all of this. You mentioned the we, uh, obviously ABC Council. What, what happens now uh, in your terms? Right, we're not finished, okay? We, this was a major victory for us, but this can never happen again, okay? Fields and Trust run a scheme where they uh, protect parks in perpetuity, so nobody can ever do what, what ABC Council tried to do to, to our park. Scarva Park is protected in perpetuity, and that comes under, the, 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 it belongs to. ABC Council, okay. They also protected one of the 3G football pitches in Brownstown Park, so they know how to do it. We deserve an apology. Absolutely. We deserve an apology for what they put us through, and that would be a massive part of their apology. And we won't give up our campaign until they protect this park in perpetuity. Absolutely. It wasn't just SRC; they had plans to sell off the whole yeah. of this side of the lake. You know, and it's not happening. And the, nobody, I don't want anybody to have to go through what we had to, had to go through. We met somebody yesterday and they stopped, right running and they stopped and they said, oh, congratulations, I haven't slept in nights waiting on this decision. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's wrong. It's very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're not going away until this park is protected for good.
absolutely. Um, it, 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 it shouldn't have ever gotten to this point. It never should have gotten to this point. As Kelly so rightfully said, it should never have gotten past the planning meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, it's, it's the, the disrespect that the council have for, for their constituents or for the, for, the, for the people that look to them for support, whatever. They just try to run roughshod over us. And this is an indicator to anybody anywhere if they, if, you know, we well, can do it, and we we did it. We started off, <clears throat> excuse me, with three people, four people, five people, and it grew. Mm -hmm. So everybody that came, I mean, the people that are on the committee, the people that got to, the likes of Kelly and Claire, but everybody that came and stood and booed and hissed and whistled outside the, the, the council buildings, those people that turned up with their children and walked with us, the people who held the banners for us, the people who came out in the bitter cold and stood and for photo opportunities, all of those people, the little people of Craig Avon, they did this, we all did this. And they, in the big house over there, they should not have underestimated the little people. You cannot, you cannot underestimate the power of the people. And because of that, they lost. It's not often the little people win, but no. this time the little people won against the giants. Yeah, so, you know. I have to say, you know, people <clears throat> talk about Craig Avon sometimes and it's not very nice. disparagingly. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I grew up here and I love this place. Me too. You, you will not meet neighbours anywhere like you meet in Craig Avon and nobody should ever underestimate the strength of this community. Absolutely. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah.